Hey there, this is Ira Hyden from Nightmare on Elm Street Part 3 Dream Warriors, and you are watching Slasher Pepper. But remember, whatever you do, don't fall asleep. Hey guys, Slasher Pepper, welcome to another video. Today is another interview, and this time with Ara from A Nightmare on Elm Street Part 3 Dream Warriors, most well known from that. There you go, you're all ready for it. <laughs> awesome, how are you doing? I'm doing peachy keen, all good here in Los Angeles, California. Awesome. Looks sunny out there and it's dark and green here in Holland. <laughs> oh no, very, very Nightmare on Elm Street-ish. Yes, I thought of it because, you know, the color green reminded me of the lighting you're shooting, you know, so mm -hmm. I, I thought very deeply of, uh, of the color of the lighting today. <laughs> I like your choice, Roger. Awesome. <laughs> uh, my first uh, question was, do you have any new projects coming up? Do I have any new projects coming up? Why, yes, I do. As a matter of fact, um, you can go see Ghostbusters Afterlife right now out in movie theaters and on digital. Um, I did voice work on that movie. You'll see these mini uh, Stay Puffed characters, <laughs> marshmallow characters that are running around causing just havoc. And uh, I got to voice a lot of those. <laughs> a lot of fun. Awesome. And also doing some voice work on a TV show that will be on HBO uh, Max called Minx, M-I-N-X. Um, and it's um, it takes place in the 70s. So it's, it's going to be a fun show. And I don't think that's out yet. I think that's probably closer to March. I think that'll be March 2022. Awesome. Well, it's yeah. very fun about the Ghostbusters Afterlife thing that you got to do that. Well, like, what was that like? Um, how did you get that job? So um, many, 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 many years ago, I used to play a thing called Broom Ball. Do you know what Broom Ball is, Roger? I don't. So Broom Ball is basically hockey, but it's on the it's on the ice. It's with sneakers and it's with a big ball and broomsticks. Okay. And uh, we used to uh, rent the um, the ice rink um, and play. And I got into the game with uh, Jason Reitman, Jason Reitman, who directed. Oh, nice. Um, and Juno and lots of fun movies. Um, so uh, we became good friends and uh, he used to throw school dances that my girlfriend at the time now wife would go to and um and we've kept in touch and then i had heard that he was directing ghostbusters and i literally sent him an email saying i will do anything i will do anything i would love to do voice work and uh so we set it up where i did um adr during the day and that was like a lot of the the people running around ah! you know screaming in the background right that you see. and then um and then he came on and directed about six actors to do the mini Stay Puft characters, um, which was a blast. So awesome. <laughs> yeah. Are you, uh, so I assume you're a fan of the original? Yes, I am. I, awesome. I think the original was, was absolutely brilliant. And Jason's father directed that. So right. it was nice to have Jason direct this one. And there were a lot of stuff that was in that first one that was um, transitioned into this one. So. Yeah. Well, that must have been uh, a, a dream come true then. A dream, you know, for a dream warrior to play yes. a mini Stay Puff marshmallow. <laughs> it was pretty cool. Who would have thought? <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. Awesome. And um, well, we actually, before the interview, we were talking about uh, 2022. Um, so do you have any New Year resolutions? You know, um, it's usually the stay healthy, um, you know, <laughs> right. And eat right. And, and, you know, that kind of stuff. But, um, we were at our friend's house for new year's and, uh, and, uh, his, my friend's resolution kind of stuck with me. And it's one that I want to use a lot more. Um, and it's to be thanked more often <laughs> because when you're thanked more often, that means you're doing something good. Right. So for an example, I dropped off a ton of blankets and pillows and sheets and, and towels to a uh, homeless and the Salvation Army out here. Um, so that was something that, you know, a lot of people 
um, were thanking me for. So awesome. stuff like that. What about you? Do you have any new year resolutions? Um, I, I always like to keep it just simple. Uh, try to make it the best year. And um, that, that comes with doing small things like making sure I get more, thank more <laughs> um, and that sort of things, you know? Yeah. Cool. Well, thank you for doing this interview. Yes. I w- <laughs> you beat me to it. I was going to make that joke. <laughs> yeah, I think it's a- awesome. <laughs> just because I'm older. I, I, I think quicker, I guess. Right. Or is it slower? I well, I guess for this one, I'll, I'll give you your worth faster with this one. <laughs> okay. Um, and then to go all the way back to uh, this guy right here, um, Freddy Krueger. What was it like filming? An Arm and Outseed Part 3 Dream Warriors. And uh, how long were you on set? Um, so it was it was incredible to get to film this movie. Um, when I was a kid in high school, a senior in, in high school, um, a bunch of my friends and I went to see the original one and it scared the hell out of me. Um, and then um, I moved out to Los Angeles and... Uh, became an actor and landed this role. Very excited, very, very happy to have the opportunity to play a kid that um, plays Dungeons and Dragons. And then in his dreams, he's a wizard master because that in essence is me because I used to play a lot of Dungeons and Dragons um, throughout middle school and high school. And so that was a blast. Um, I worked, I wanna say five weeks on the movie um, we did a lot of scenes in, um, the VA, the veterans, uh, hospital over here on Westwood, um, where we shot hadn't been used in over probably 30 years. So there was a lot of, uh, real cobwebs and, and, uh, crazy stuff going on there. Um, that was a lot of fun there. And then we took our work downtown and uh, we were in a warehouse across from the L.A. County Jail, which was scary in itself. Right. And uh, we had a lot of night shoots there. Um, and that was also um, just just really cool. And everybody bonded on this movie. I'm, I'm still really good friends with, with with pretty much everybody on the on the movie set. I mean, I don't talk to Lawrence Fishburne as much, but when I run into him, you know, I always say, hey, Larry, and he says, it's Lawrence or the fish. Oh, yes. Okay, that's right. (laughs) Awesome. Well, sounds like you guys had a blast filming this. It really was. It was um, a lot of work, a lot of hard work. um, And it was um, a lot of camaraderie. You know, it was the the teenage kids coming together uh, to fight the demon. You know what I mean? Yeah. Really awesome. (laughs) Um, and well, what are some of your own favorite horror movies? Some of my own favorite horror movies. Well, you know, I really do like a nightmare in Elm street part three, uh, strictly because I was in it. It's a classic. Um, you know, growing up, I really wasn't, I was scared of horror movies. I really wasn't into them as much, but, um, a few of them that scared the hell out of me was poltergeist. Uh, Amityville Horror, uh, the original Frankenstein, nice, and Dracula. Awesome, classics there. <laughs> yep. Um, and then here are some, uh, I guess, philosophical questions. Uh, the first one ties in nicely with uh, you know horror and uh, that sort of dark stuff. Um, what do you think hell looks like if there even is one? <laughs> I would imagine it being red. Um, I would imagine it looking a lot like pain and a lot of suffering, uh, a lot of negativity, um, a lot of density, being really dense and and heavy, uh, pulling you down, so to speak. Right. Well, let's hope we don't end up there. That's for sure, because it'll keep dragging you down. Yes. According to me, that is. Yeah. What about you? What's your vision of hell? Ooh, 
um i just imagine it being very personal you know so say um someone is well to keep in mind i'll show you that someone is afraid of freddy krueger he would just be surrounded by a freddy krueger and if he's insecure about certain things freddy would keep reminding him of that insecurity and you know Ooh. sort of forever in eternal prison <laughs> right oh, that's crazy yeah <laughs> um and well you can make the world a bit more positive of this question maybe uh if you ruled the world what would it look like if i ruled the world there would be a lot of sunshine there would be a lot of green there would be a lot of peace there would also be a lot of sports a lot of football games a lot of basketball baseball hockey um but i i think it would be more of the everybody getting along you know there would there was something that happened yesterday that um at burbank airport uh for 7 minutes all airplanes were were grounded nobody could fly and that was because of uh missiles that were launched in in north korea uh, that's scary i mean we don't yeah. need war to to get along and we don't need weapons so that's my ruling everything guns psh, gone certainly no agree. more horror movies no i'm kidding <laughs> I don't agree with that part. <laughs> I'm glad you're kidding. Uh and then your final question, if your life was a movie, how would you want it to end? Gosh. Uh <laughs> I would want it to end in in some kind of comic fashion. Uh I'm I'm big on comedies, uh Blazing Saddles uh is one of my favorite comedy movies. Um Young Frankenstein. Maybe it would end in a Mel Brooks movie. Nice. <laughs> I, I do like Mel Brooks a lot. Awesome. Um, so yeah, it would end in some kind of comedy, comic form. Sounds great. <laughs> Where I get the last band. laugh. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> awesome. Well, is there anything you would like to add to the interview? Um, you know, I just want everyone to uh get along out there and and just remember whatever you do don't fall asleep <laughs> otherwise freddy just might get you uh oh <laughs> there he awesome. is then you got to become a dream warrior so you can defeat the demon yes I'm oh you know peace. also something that we did Roger a couple of years ago that I didn't tell you was um we had a reading a, a staged reading of nightmare on elm street 3 and it was at the famous whiskey a go go here in in LA nice. and we raised we raised almost $20,000 for um for mental health awareness oh that's amazing yeah so it was really using um the movie for some good yeah so that was that's that was fantastic cool. yeah especially why did you guys choose for that charity i mean obviously like mental health plays a huge sort of undertone message within the movie so is that why you guys that's exactly why. right and that's you know because you know even with this pandemic we're all fighting our demons you know yeah and um and sometimes you need a little extra help so we were able to raise it for the dd hirsch foundation if anybody wants to donate money dd hirsch foundation their, their awesome. website is, is on the world wide web and um, in the description of this uh, video i'll make sure to put it there oh that'd be great um yeah and so you know if we could help one person great if we helped a lot more awesome you know so right. that was that was our intention and we got robert england to play freddy on stage oh, and nice. we got um heather lagen camp she was one of the producers she did her role and we got everybody except for ken sagos and jennifer rubin they were at a convention they couldn't fly back in time unfortunately oh too bad but maybe next time you never know yes you guys should definitely go for a second run then Right, that would be good. <laughs> yeah, Roger. Well, this has been uh, really fun. For sure. And uh just remember to keep making movies when you can and remember to keep me in mind for any of those parts. I certainly will. And um well, I want to thank you again um for doing this interview 
And uh, also thank you to everybody watching. Thank you so much for watching. And uh, we'll see you guys next time. See ya. See ya.